Hey Josh. Oh hey man. Hey man, you know you got your first YouTube sponsor? Yeah, I have a CVPN. Yeah, you do know what a VPN is, right? Yep. Dude, I literally just saw you reading that. Dude, it was a joke. I don't believe you. Fine, I'll make a video about it just to prove how knowledgeable I am. I mean, plus because I won't get paid otherwise, but that's just a little bit of a side point. Wow. How's it going guys, it's Josh here. Today I'm going to explain to you what a VPN is, the potential benefits of using one, and hopefully help you decide whether or not it's something that you might actually use. Let's get into it. So online privacy is a big thing nowadays. A lot of people are concerned about what their internet service provider can see, what the government can see, it's a big thing. Now normally to access any web page on the internet, here's what happens. Your device tells your router that it would like this web page. It's an article about ducks. That message then goes to your internet service provider who then go to the requested site, grabs the article, brings it back and delivers it to you. So obviously from that process, your ISP knows exactly what site you visited. Perhaps less obvious though is the fact that the website that you requested the page from also knows exactly who requested the page, you. Now in simple terms, the way a VPN works is it tunnels through to the website you requested and your ISP can't see what's going on in that tunnel. That means they can't see what websites you visited, what apps you used. Basically, once you're connected to a VPN, all internet traffic you use becomes private. What about the website you visited? Well, because you're retrieving the page by going through your VPN supplier, all that website will see is that Ivacy VPN, for example, requested that page. They can't see who the page actually goes to after that. Your VPN supplier secretly gets it back to you. What are the benefits of this? Well, there's two main ones. The first is that your ISP can't really collect any information about you if they can't see any of your online activity, which also means they can't sell it. Yes, that's right. Your ISP won't think twice about selling all of the data they've collected about you because data is valuable and it makes them money. The second benefit is that by using a VPN, you become anonymous online. If you are the type of person that says they download evaluation copies of software or movies or games via torrenting for example, then using a VPN will protect your identity while doing so. In the torrenting world there are things known as trackers which track the clients connected to a particular download. These are normal and are necessary to facilitate BitTorrenting and in a lot of cases are nothing to worry about, especially if the media that you're downloading is legitimate and not pirated. But if you did happen to be downloading, let's say your favorite album without paying for it, there is a possibility that one of those trackers that we just mentioned is in fact the copyright owner. They connect to the BitTorrent Swarm to see exactly who is downloading that album and from there they'll be able to collect all the information they need in order to contact your internet service provider who will then send you a threatening letter. Now there's nothing illegal about torrenting in and of itself, it's just another method of file sharing. It's all about the content you're downloading. If you want to download anonymously, then a VPN will help with that because like we said earlier, you aren't identifiable from your IP address and are therefore anonymous. If you happen to do a lot of bit torrenting, for example, a VPN might actually increase your speed, which sounds weird. It's like, how can a VPN make your internet faster? However, ordinarily, every internet service provider can see what type of traffic is being used on your network. And some of them, not all, but some of them will throttle BitTorrent traffic, for example. Sometimes it's an attempt to cap your data usage, even though you've paid for unlimited broadband. A VPN gets around this problem because when you're downloading through one, the only thing your internet service provider can see is that you're using VPN bandwidth, but they don't know what you're using it for. It could be anything. You could be a business, for example, which often use VPNs for the purpose of end-to-end -end encryption. And therefore, your ISP have no reasonable excuse to throttle it, and so you'll always be getting the full speed you paid for. If you happen to like free Wi-Fi, a VPN might help you out here. Open or public Wi-Fi networks are really not very safe at all. So if you do decide to do some online shopping or banking while on public Wi-Fi, well, frankly, you're a little bit stupid. There's a couple of popular attacks that can result in your data being stolen. Uh, the first is a man in the middle attack. This is pretty much where a hacker will eavesdrop on your internet traffic by intercepting your data before it reaches the router. Literally a man in the middle. Another commonly used method is the rogue hotspot. This is basically a hotspot set up by a hacker made to look identical to the legitimate one in the hope of you connecting to it. But of course, if you do, you're making yourself an easy target because from there, 
they can do anything. For example, they might redirect you from a secure real website to an unsecure fake version, which would steal any data you inputted into it and send it straight to the hacker. Now, while it's hard to say how often these types of attacks actually happen, they're actually surprisingly easy to pull off. And so I, for one, don't really feel comfortable using public Wi-Fi for sending any sensitive information. That's where VPNs again come in handy because they basically protect you from that. Even if you were connected to a hacker's Wi-Fi hotspot, your computer's internet traffic would be encrypted. So while they'd still be able to see you were doing something, the only data they'd actually see would be a bunch of encrypted nonsense. And finally, location spoofing. So I live in the UK. If I type what's my IP location into Google, it will tell me that I live in the UK. In fact, it'll tell me the exact city because it knows where I'm connecting to the internet from based on my IP address. However, by using a VPN, I can make it look like I live, well, basically anywhere. And this might come in handy if you want to overcome geo-blocking. What is geo-blocking? It's basically where you can access certain content in one country, but not in another. For example, if you live in the USA and you'd like to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Netflix, well, you can't. Everyone else in the world can, but for whatever reason, it's usually to do with licensing. If you live in the US, you're out of luck. But anyway, a VPN can help you overcome this issue because you can literally select from a menu which country you want to appear in. So if you live in the US, but you select a UK server from within Ivacy VPN, Netflix will think you live in the UK and therefore let you watch Netflix UK content. If you want to appear in Australia, you'd select an Australian server. Just bear in mind the time it takes for you to retrieve a web page will increase or decrease based on how far away the selected location is. Australia is like ages away from me, so it's going to be slower than say connecting to a server in France. That's probably pretty obvious, but I just thought I'd mention it. So just to sum up, a VPN might be useful to you if one, you want to browse the web anonymously, if you're concerned about privacy. Two, if you want to potentially increase your speed, if you find your ISP throttles certain types of traffic on your network, i.e. BitTorrent traffic. Three, if you consider yourself a bit of a pirate and don't want to be caught while downloading illegal media, which you shouldn't do anyway, but I'm not your mum. Four, if you use public Wi-Fi hotspots and you don't want your sensitive data being stolen. And five, if you want to access geo-blocked content that isn't available in your country. Those are the main benefits, and no, if you don't think any of those would be useful to you, then you don't need a VPN. But if you do, then it might be worth investing in one, and either CVPN, who have kindly sponsored this video, offer a rather good value VPN service. I have used it, it's very good. It's got quite a few things going for it. One of the best things is it's like ridiculously cheap. Uh, it's one of the cheapest VPNs around actually. Ivacy also has a strict no login policy. So if you don't know what that is, basically it means they don't log any of your session data. So they don't save information about what you download, when you go online, what you search for, etc. Pretty much any VPN service worth their salt should have a no logs policy in place to protect your privacy. Speeds are pretty good. I got virtually no speed loss while connected to UK servers. As I mentioned earlier though, obviously the further away the location of the server is that you connect to, the slower it will be. That's just how the internet works. But obviously it won't actually slow you down themselves, you literally get unlimited bandwidth. There's an internet kill switch built in if you want to enable it. It'll basically instantly kill your internet connection if the VPN disconnects for whatever reason, so you don't end up accidentally reverting back to your normal connection without realizing. There's also a secure downloading feature which scans whatever you're downloading in real time, removing any viruses or malware at server level before actually letting it get to your computer. Ivacy are also one of the first VPNs to offer split tunneling, which is pretty cool actually. Instead of making all internet traffic from your device use the VPN, you can split it. So I could tell it to make these specific set of programs use the VPN for their traffic, while everything else just uses a normal connection. It's pretty cool. Those are the most notable features. It's available on a bunch of different platforms, so you can install it on your computer, your mobile and your smart TV. And it's nice and easy to use. The UI is very simple and well laid out. They also accept Bitcoin as payment, which if you're some sort of James Bond spy who really doesn't want any traceability, they've got you covered. In fact, the only details they keep on file about you is your name, your email, and your payment method. That's it. If you think you might want to give Ivan CVPN a go, I'll have links down in the description for you guys to so go check them out. They are special links, so if you use them, Ivan C will know I sent you, and they'll probably be very happy. And so will I. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you enjoyed, drop us a like rating to show your support, and feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. With that being said, hope you all have a good week. I'll catch you all in the next one.